wear your suit. What, for bowling? Listen, I'd wear muck-stained overalls if I had any. Oh, Don! Well, it's me that's offering. It's me that's giving him money. Should be him. In a dress suit with a starch collar. No, no, I'll tell you what. In a commissionaire's outfit, eh? With his hand out saying, Thank you very much, Mr Brennan, sir. Is there any other little thing I can do for you? Yeah, er... Uh, polish me shoes, Baldwin. Oh, what I'd give. Oh, oh. He'll be wearing a suit. He is Mr Suit. That's what you'll be doing when you're an employer. Ah, no, no. This employer won't be afraid to get his hands dirty. The lads will drink with me, talk with me. We'll soon find out the difference between a Cockney suit and a Manchester grafter. <laughs> yeah, and every day will be the first day of spring. <laughs> <laughs> Morning. Oh, oh! Didn't want to wait you. How long have you been out here? I couldn't sleep, so I just... Yeah, neither could I. Flaming seagulls. It wasn't the cops. Do you want some coffee? Oh, yes, please. I'm sorry there's only one towel, but if you don't mind sharing... Don't be silly. I mean, it's on the radio. To... Curly, it's occurred to me. What? Well, Reg doesn't know that I'm here. He thinks that I'm in Weatherfield. So if he tried to contact me, well, he wouldn't be able to find me. Sounds like you should be at home, then. I should be where he is. If ever there was a man in despair, Curly, it's that man that wrote that letter. If he's gone... Well, it seems like it. But if ever there was a bad penny, let's hope our Maureen doesn't turn round one day and find him stood goggling. Oh. You're here bright and early. Yeah, I've been up since six. Roy Cropper was stalking around, said he'd heard a cuckoo. I behaved myself. I never said it takes one to know one. <laughs> I know where there's another. And we don't need second sight to know you mean lowest off. No, you don't. Anyway, I'm glad you're in. You'll have to excuse me. Cos if I don't get to the bank, the manager will skin me. That's fine. Don't you rush. <sighs> another day of Reg the Rotter. Can I call? <laughs> You must thank your Norman for giving me a ring last night. Oh, I will. At least we know our Maureen's in one piece. Well, if not Reg. <clears throat> oh, don't lose no sleep over him. Mark my words. If a man goes missing in low stuff, there's something fishy about him. To some people, four thousand's peanuts. <sighs> we can borrow it. Oh, great. Get us tied in with loan sharks. I'll just what we need. No, I don't mean that. All right, well, where then? Well, I can think of someone. Sal, I can't do that. She's already given us five grand. Yeah, but borrowing it. And think of the trouble that caused. A land's not a gift. She'd get it back with interest. Sal, I couldn't. I couldn't look her in the face, could you? Well, for 4,000 quid, I could, yeah. Well, I'll, I'll keep thinking. Oh, how useful. And in the meantime, he goes and sells it somewhere else. I wish we could get that money from your dad. We're getting it back, aren't we? Yeah, in dribs and drabs, it's worse than useless. Oh, look. Oh, don't pick it up. You don't know where it's been. Dribs and drabs. It wasn't exactly bonanza time, was it, when Dad came back into our lives? Oh, look, there's another one. Where are you getting all these from? Up there. Hey. I only wish there were banknotes I were throwing down. What are you doing up there? Just fixing this bit of flashing for Rita. Hey, uh, you can let her pick them up. They've only been in my pocket. All right, sweetheart, but just this once. Don't do it ever again, will you? Thank you, Grandad. Hey, here's a couple for Sophie, eh? You ready? Watch it. He'll be throwing slates down next. You don't think he here, does, do you? Don't care that much if he did. Come on, Rosie. Just one more look. Where, though? I don't know. Where do you go if you're a lonely, middle-aged man despairing of life? I don't think you know. You, you just wander aimlessly, you talk to yourself, you... Look at the sea, seeking, yearning, I don't Yeah, know. right. I can't go back to Weatherford while he's out there. I'll just walk and look. 
I'll do anything, Curly. I, I love him. Oh! Reg! Oh, Raquel. Uh, no, no, there's no news yet. Yeah, well, thanks anyway. Oh, yes, you see, of course. All right, thanks, yeah. Listen, I'll be an hour or two, all right? Take care. Hiya. Are you all right? Yeah, I'm fine. Thanks for phoning last night. It put our minds at rest. Oh, that's OK. So when are you coming back? She's having one last look. Then, I think. I hope. Oh, it's romantic, really. Despairing husband vanishes. Desperate wife searches a fish pot. <laughs> Listen, Raquel, I couldn't tell you last night because she was in the room. But it isn't romantic at all. Reg, he's chucked his job in and he's run off with some woman. Apparently, she's got money. I knew it'd be something like that, the filthy beggar. Wouldn't you know? It finally starts making a bit of sense, does all this, so why haven't you told her? I wasn't sure I should. Well, of course you should. Just think how she'll feel when she finds out. Oh. We think of her now, scouring the streets whilst he's shacked up with his rich bit. Oh, Curly, tell her the moment she gets back. I'll be off now, Mavis. Well, chin up. Good morning. Oh, no. Sorry to hear about your bad luck with Tim Hedges. Tim Trim Hedges? <laughs> Thought about that one by yourself, didn't you? Oh, let's change the subject. Here, you gave him an earful because you thought it was a wind-up. Unfortunate, that, eh, Rita? I was very sad to hear about it. Mm, me too. Mind you, you see, you've got to be sympathetic. There's not many people that April fool themselves. But I'm still willing to put in a word because he's a decent bloke, Tim, and uh, he's got a sense of humour. No, thank you. Definitely no. Well, he won't bear a grudge, he's a mate. We've had all the favours we need from you. If you hadn't told us in the first place that you were putting in a word, this would never have happened. So yourselves. Uh, allotments weekly, please, Rita. Oh. Never. True as I'm stood here, Betty, for an arrest. Ooh, the little beggar. Oh, yes, I'm alone. Oh, I don't believe it. I've left my purse in the cafe. Uh, can I have tick till his lordship comes in? Oh, I should think so. <laughs> well, I won't make a habit of it. It's just a tonic. <laughs> OK, Betty. love. She didn't know, you say? Oh, no. Oh, so sad, Betty, yearning through lower stuff. Oh. Orange juice, pineapple juice, two hot pots, and easy on the camera. Two hot pots, Betty. Coming up, love. Look, give it me when you've got it, lovey. Oh, bless you, Betty. <laughs> now, keep it to yourself, but you don't use the caviar. <laughs> so, what's the opening bid, then? Well, that's... Try 60, it's 120. Uh, 38 or 40, what do you think? Oh, no, no, now we don't barter. Oh, what's wrong with 35? No, no, it wouldn't take us seriously. Well, no, it either, a boot juice. No. We'll open on 38, move straight to 40, but 45 is the top, shall so What do you think, eh? Okay, oh, us. £45,000. Anyone yeah. think it was Monopoly we're playing? <laughs> Shame Baldwin's the banker. Right. Everything's off and you've got the keys. I don't want to leave. Maureen, you're wasting your time. Curly, he's a sensitive, vulnerable man. I know people laugh at him because he's funny looking and he, and he tells a joke or two, but it doesn't mean he can't be hurt. He, He's a totally genuine person. Uh, and he wouldn't consciously hurt anybody. And... <sighs> Maureen, have you ever thought that he might be up to something? Oh, yes. There you have it. Just because he looks scheming and devious, it doesn't mean he is. Don't judge a book by his cover. And you, of all people, you work with him. Has he ever done you down? Yes. When? Quite a few times, actually. Well, he never has me. Never, ever, ever, Curly. So I'm sorry, but I won't hear a word against him. Are you ready, then? Yes. Come on. Then. Oh, hi. Uh, oh, 
Oh, Josie, you, you don't know Mike's movements, do you? What now? Mm. He's working through. Oh, wouldn't you know? I forgot my purse. I'm not paid for my dinner. Don't worry, I'll sub you. You wouldn't, would you? Oh, I'll get it off him as soon as I get back. <laughs> well, you just see that you do then. <laughs> off you go. I'll sort it out with Betty. Oh, thanks, Josie. You're a laugh. Bye. Uh, Bye. We'll take more than our lunch off him. Fingers crossed. <laughs> yeah. Now, look, last chance. You're definite. Well, I'm definite. When's best time? Uh, come at three, and I'll make sure he's there. See you. Oh, hi. <laughs> oh, ah, Mavis. Oh, humble pie. Sounds almost appetising when you say it enough, doesn't it? Humble pie. Humble pie. Did you ring him? Oh, yes. The secretary was out at lunch, but I managed to speak to Mr Hedges himself. Oh. He could meet us at three. Oh, well done, Derek. Well done. Yes, thank you. And a minute might not be humble pie if we explain our mistake, April Fool's Day and all that. Well, he might see the funny side of it. Oh, Mr Bowen, I'm sorry to ask you, but your wife told me to get some money off you. I give a lump sum to charity at Christmas. I don't give during the year. No, it's not charity. I lent her for dinner. Eh? She forgot her purse. It's typical. Do you do things like that? It has been known. Then you're in the wrong job. My staff should remember everything. Oh, I remember. It was £3.75. £3.75. Well, I haven't got any change at the moment. Right, I'm off now. Anyone ask, I won't be back. What, are you going now? Yeah, why not? Oh, it's just that Don was coming in to see you. What for? Well, he wanted to tell you himself. Did he? Well, uh, what time did he say he'd be here? Three. Three? Yeah. Yes, all right. Uh, I'll hang on for him. Why not? Three pounds seventy-five, was it? Have you got change for uh, oh, the fire? Uh... We're here to see Mr. Hedges. Which Mr. Hedges? Um, tr Trim. Um, th th Tim. Is he expecting you? I think so. I realise there were two. Because his diary's stuffed to bursting this PM. Tim's parks and cemeteries, Reggie's planning. Ah. Well, I think we're part of the stuffing, so to speak. What name is it? Wilton, Mr and Mrs. Not down here. Who did you make the appointment with? Um, him. Personally, at lunchtime. When for? Three o'clock. Tim Hedges, three o'clock. Just says April Fools. That'll be that'll us. Be us. Yes, that's us. I'll tell him you're here. Tim Hedges Parks and Cemeteries. Keep calm, Mavis. It almost certainly isn't a conspiracy. <laughs> April Fools. Well, there you are. <laughs> Seems he has got a sense of humour. Don's here, Mr Baldwin. Oh. You're not a cigar man, are you, Don? Uh, no, thanks. Josie? Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> Very wise. Stunt your growth. Sit down. All right, so. Now then, what can I do for you? Well, uh, it's about your garage. You mean the one on Coronation Street? How many other garages have you got? What about it? Well, I want to make a bid for it. Really? Really? Oh, that's nice. How much? 38,000. Oh, come on, Don. You know it's worth at least 50. Mm, that's your opinion. The offer's 38. Can't do business in, can we? And I hung on specially for you. You don't expect to get 50. Don't I? I get the right buyer, I could get much more than that. Now, I'm sorry, Don. Just not talking, are we? Uh, look, um, just hang on a minute, will you? Busy man, Don. 38 thou? <laughs> You're wasting my time. You must understand, Mr. Hedges, it, it was nothing personal. You see, I thought you were abusive. Well, if I'm honest, I thought you were a nutcase, but... Ah, oh, well, but... And it was odd, because my pal Des had put a word in for you. Yeah, well, you see what... And then you'd come on as if I was some kind of con man. I can assure you, I had no intention of being abusive. Oh, no, my husband's never abusive. <laughs> we thought it was a joke. <laughs> An April Fool, <laughs> on your part. Uh, you and that oaf, Barnes. Uh, Des, who sometimes can be quite a prankster. Oh, yes. Yes, a well-meaning joker. I mean, there is quite a history between us. Yeah, well, a good nature mm, is. One way or another. If you don't mind my saying so, it is a rather unfortunate name for an allotments manager. What is? Yours. Why? 
hedges. It's hardly exceptional, is it? Look in the phone book, there's hedges down every street. Yeah, but it was April 1st. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Look, we have been on that list for years. I can't tell you, Mr. Hedges, how much we want an allotment. And if you can see your way to considering us again, despite our misunderstanding... Oh, yes. Uh, the trouble is, I've let that allotment. Is this the only list you're on? Afraid so. I put all our hedges in one basket, unfortunately. Mm, should have hedged your bets. There is another one. It's not as good. Oh, well, anything. Yes, absolutely. Well, it's not bad, it's just been let go a bit. Oh, I know the one. It's over by the, um... Uh, along the... The edge. Edge. We'll take that, happily. If that's OK with you, Mr... Call me Tim. Well, since you're friends of Des, I think we can arrange it. You owe him a drink. <laughs> Two or three. <laughs> we often drink together. Oh, constantly. <laughs> can I just draw your attention to these? Uh, of course, yes. What? It's just the council bylaws concerning garden ornaments. The Allotments Act, 1934. Subsection 13A, paragraph D, relating to allotment gnomes. Viz. No gnomes shall be permitted on an allotment unless licensed. Gnomes shall be decently clothed, under 18 inches high, and not have insanely comic and tiresome expressions on their faces. All gnomes shall have both ears. If a gnome disappears, the keeper of said gnome shall not accuse his neighbours of stealing it, nor shall he become obsessive to the point of insanity about it. A gnome that sends postcards shall be considered deviant and smashed on sight. Very good. Very good. Very funny, isn't it, Mavis? <laughs> yes, very funny. <laughs> Extremely funny indeed. <laughs> Welcome to the allotments. We're not in the champagne yet, but put some on ice because between you and me, I think I've sold the garage. Who to? Well, if not the Webster's Brennan. He came round and made an offer. Well, how much? 40,000 going in the press, but I think he'll pay more. He knows he's worth it. How? Well, Josie just happened to see a valuation line on my desk. Well, it just happened. <laughs> Do you know, it's the first civil word I've had out of Brandon since I won his car off him. Yeah, well, you rip him off and it'll be the last. Uh -huh. See ya. See ya. Thanks, Thank you. Back to it, I suppose. Back to what, Emily? In a nutshell, to Mr Sugden. <laughs> He's icing his simnel cake. It's a very serious operation. Involves a huge amount of, uh, hmm, how shall I put it, of Mr Sugden? <laughs> Thank you, Gail, and I didn't have to say it myself. Oh, but you should say it, Emily. Yes, you should get it off your chest. <laughs> right, I will. I'll never want to ice a wretched simnel cake, so I don't know why I have to be instructed every inch of the way. Oh, so this is where you got to. How's the cake? Oh, all finished, yes. You'll see when we get in. Yes. No offence, Mrs Bishop, but jobs like that, it's much easier for me if I've nobody standing by my elbow. I'll have a cup of tea, please, Gail, and a middle one if you've got one left. So, welcome back to Weatherfield. Yeah. Mother's in there. Is she? Bound to be. Well, that's uh, it's nice for you. Oh, Curly, do you think I could have sanctuary just in your house, just for a minute, till I gather some strength to face her? It's... Yeah, come on. Oh, hello, Mr. Baldwin. Is Kevin in? Uh, yes, yeah, he is. Good. He can't claim overtime for tonight, then, can he? You can have a word. Yeah, please Love that cat, too. Yeah. You knocked off a bit sharpish, didn't you? Oh, it's quarter past. What's the matter? Yeah, but you're washed and changed already. Hey, Rosie, come off that sofa. Let Mr Baldwin sit down. No, that's all right. I'm not stopping. I just popped in to tell you I've had a serious offer for the garage. Oh, I accepted it. No, not yet. But I thought I'd better warn you. Unless you want the place sold over your head, then... Oh. How much? 40,000. But uh, between you and me, I think there's more where that came from. So, are you saying that we should offer 42 or something? Well, put it this way. If you offer the same as the other bloke, it's yours. If, if he offers more, then it's his. I'm only human. 
Anyway, I'll let you know, all right? See ya. So what now? We've had it, haven't we? Oh. What do you want from life, Kevin? What do you mean? Oh, well, that says it all, doesn't it? What? What do you want from life, Kevin? What do you mean? Says it all. Kettle's on. I need the loo. Yeah. You all right there, Maureen? Yeah, yeah, you're fine, aren't you, Maureen? Um, I just needed a moment. Oh, you know, God. Before. It's my mother, you see. Yeah. Well, that's right. <sighs> anyway, thank you. Curly's told me. I've been there, Maureen. I know what it's like being the last to find out, but you mustn't think about it, I promise. Everybody knows what a randy little devil Reg was, and nobody will think bad of you. Well, what do you mean, why should they? Well, they shouldn't, and they won't. You see, I just hope he's all right. I, I hope that he hasn't done anything stupid. Do you really? Mm. Well, I think you've a very generous spirit. If I'm honest, Maureen, when Des did it to me, I did not wish him well. I wanted very nasty things to happen to him, and I don't deny it. Well, I think Des was messing about, wasn't he? You know, with that Tanya, and... You see, Reg is just, well... He's lost, and... He's wandering the streets. Why are you looking at me like that? You haven't told her. No. Well, why? Because I thought it'd be better coming from, you know, a, a woman to woman thing. Well, do you know something? No, not a lot, no. Well, more than enough. Reg has got another woman, Maureen. And he didn't have the face to tell you. I oh, like a man, eh? Where have you heard this? Eric Furman. Apparently she worked at Furman's. It's been going on for quite a while. So apparently she's got money. Yeah, she inherited. You're not serious. Oh, please, you're not serious. Oh. Oh. Like I say, Maureen, I've been there. I can't bear it. I know. I know. It makes sense. I know when you see it, don't you, when it's too late. Oh, it's terrible. I know. Terrible, terrible. My mother was right. <laughs> 